Okay. Hello. Uh, my name is John Griffith. I work at SolidFire. Um, we do a clustered storage appliance. Um, this is Force from Solid, uh, our service provider up in uh, Canada. So uh, today we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, iWeb and block storage using OpenStack and SolidFire and kind of give you a little background on their journey into OpenStack and kind of, of how things have gone with them and, and what they've been doing. So uh, iWeb is one of Canada's largest hosting providers. Uh, they've been delivering reliable hosting and co-location for uh, over a decade now. And one of their, their most uh, notable things is they're, they're pretty much famous for their reliability and their customer service. Um, they've been in Netcraft's top 10 uh, for rocks, rock solid uh, reliability uh, almost every every year. Yep. yep. Um, they offer guaranteed service level agreements, um, and they have a state of the art data center that's over 90,000 square feet in Montreal. Um, and then they have additional uh, new data centers as well, um, with a dedicated ser server capacity of over 35,000 servers. Uh, so it's a really large operation. Um, and they recently made an expansion into uh, cloud service offerings. Uh, so that's where OpenStack came in. Um, so, you know, the, the first step here was uh, deciding to go ahead and go into cloud hosting. Um, the, the keys here for them were to keep in mind they wanted to continue to provide the, the service and support that they were already known for. and, and and excelling there, um, you know, continuing the reliability, continuing to provide the SLAs to the customers, um, you know, everything on the same level and the sa in the same par with what they were doing already. Um, in, in terms of requirements in t uh, for building their cloud and what they were going to use, the, some of the key factors were block storage, um, having block storage that was multi-tenant aware, um, and, and to move away from server-based storage platforms and provide reliability, scalability, and uh, the ability to uh, set up automation thanks to the APIs and things like that. So there's some key ingredients that they were looking for. Um, they went through a number of, of trials, tests, prototypes, things like that, different cloud platforms other than OpenStack. Other storage, uh, other storage offerings as well. Um, each one had specific challenges and issues. Um, and those that actually provided real true SAN block storage support uh, were pretty limited. Uh, so when it came to OpenStack, um, you know, they, they discovered the ability to uh, scale out horizontally um, and then most importantly, from our perspective, um, the block storage feature stack. So uh, out of the other platforms that were being investigated, uh, OpenStack offered significantly more advanced uh, block storage service. Um, the other uh, considering factor was uh, OpenStack is significantly ahead of the pack in terms of Maturity um, in terms, well, maturity in terms of features and, and, and growth. Um, and the continued fast pace of, of OpenStack development. Uh, so overall, OpenStack appeared to offer the best community, showed the greatest promise, um, and, and the, the, the brightest future as, as a use for their cloud platform. So uh, at that point, you know, you determine OpenStack meets the requirements. Uh, the testing looks good. Everything's going well, um, and, and their, the future seems to align with their needs. Uh, so the next step was to determine what backend storage device they wanted to use. So that's where SolidFire came in. Uh, a little bit about SolidFire: we uh, we create a highly scalable clustered storage appliance. Um, we do all SSDs. Uh, we do inline deduplication. One of the big things that we focus on is guaranteed quality of service. Uh, so we allow you to 
specify IOP uh, limits for uh, each volume on a volume per volume basis. And you can also go back and change that dynamically. Um, we were actually founded by uh, Dave Wright, who used to be at Rackspace. When he was at Rackspace, he was actually trying to determine uh, how to find a block storage solution for the cloud. Uh, and he couldn't find one, so he decided to go off and build one. And that's, that's how we came to uh, the The key factors, um, as far as iWeb vision, uh, the fact that we offer It's already on. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, we offer non-RAID redundancy and self-healing. So we're a clustered storage appliance. Um, we have a, a very high cost to benefit ratio uh, compared to our competitors out there. We have an API that's designed specifically for automation and, and to allow you to do things like OpenStack very easily. Um, and it also gives you the ability to give multiple service levels and service level offerings you know, through QoS and such, um, all from one platform. So other products where you may have to say, I'll get an SSD product for my high performance customers, I'll get SATA for my lower performance, and I'll get some, you know, whatever. Uh, you can actually go ahead and disperse all those workloads onto a single solid fire cluster. Um, and then also, of course, since we are a clustered device, um, we don't have a single point of failure. So we do replication and everything else internally, you know, so. This is Mistel, all right. Um, so <laughs> the, the thing that's really cool about iWeb, um, if you look at it, um, you know, they, they, they came in and they did the shopping and everything and they found OpenStack and went with OpenStack, uh, worked with us, implemented our solution from SolidFire. Um, everything went really, really fast. Um, but what was really interesting was after they started implementing this and using this, they actually came back and started contributing back into OpenStack. So they came across certain things that they wanted to see, certain things that they wanted to do, uh, maybe some things missing, maybe some bugs, maybe a new feature or whatever it might be. Um, and this is kind of like, in my opinion, a textbook's case of why open source and why OpenStack works. Um, there were things that they wanted to do and customize and they actually went ahead and did that not only for themselves, but they also sent it back upstream. So they contributed those changes and those enhancements back to the community. So now everybody has those. Um, so to me, that's, that's a huge, huge testament of why open source works and why OpenStack works. Um, in addition to that, it, it's not just the block storage project, Cinder. It's not, that's not the only place they're contributing. They're contributing all over OpenStack in all of the projects. They're doing the same thing. Uh, so it's a pretty fantastic story, and it's a, and it's a real testament to the OpenStack model and what you can do. <coughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, so the, um, the iWeb cloud offering was basically based on SolidFire because, uh, as you'll see, there's some um, the specificities of the cloud that are based on this uh, boot from volume and this uh, central uh, block device. Um, when I, wa I want to say something about OpenStack evolution. Basically, uh, OpenStack is, uh, is moving very quickly. I've been uh, working with OpenStack for about two years, and uh, it's, it's changing a lot. And there's um, a lot of different backends, different implementation for storage, for network. And um, <coughs> the, um, the specificities that we have with SolidFire, I wanted to talk about it. Uh, it's something that needs to be addressed by the OpenStack community. To, to basically hide all these different clouds that, that are gonna um, be uh, spawned across the world and hide them behind a um, unified API, which is currently not perfect, but it's something that's gonna um, get better with time. Okay, <coughs> so um, the, iWeb's, the iWeb's cloud is 100% boot from volume, so basically there's no local storage in all our compute nodes. There is absolutely no disk except the uh, operating system, a small SSD drive. Um, because all the volumes that, that um, are backing the VMs, they come from SolidFire. Um, SolidFire is uh, highly fault tolerant, so the data is persistent in all the drives. That means that the VMs, they, have a, they, are, they are highly available, meaning if we lose a compute node, 
we will simply reboot the VMs that were on this compute node. They will reboot with the, um, the disk as it was when, it, when the node crashed because the disk, again, is on solid fire. So, um, so that's something that we wanted to, to provide to our customers. Basically, <coughs> it, is it is between a cloud and a VPS, meaning it's a cloud, definitely, but um, the VMs are more persistent than a standard cloud where you can lose a VM and lose the data on it. So um, it, it provides our customers with a um, different way to address this high availability. Some people will not uh, benefit from it. They will, they will do just like they would on a, um, a standard cloud. Some people will rely more on the high availability. Um, as John said, um, one of the important things in, in SolidFire is the quality of service. So in our case, what we did is, is um, we, we kind of implemented the disk performance inside of the, uh, the flavor of the VM. So basically, instead of having only CPUs and RAM, you also choose a VM depending on the performance you want. Some people, they don't need a lot of performance re uh, on disk, so they, they'll pick a standard um, QS. Some people need more performance to run database or uh, Cassandra, for example, and stuff like that. <coughs> they will just pick a flavor that provides them with um, better disk performance. So that enables our customers to uh, deploy um, stuff that would be hard to deploy, for example, on Amazon, where, where they would need to uh, mount multiple EBS and do uh, RAID on them or something like that. Um, there's, there were some challenges to, to, uh, to uh, fully boot from Volume Cloud. Um, one of the things is that, like I said at the beginning, the, currently the API doesn't hide, the OpenStack API doesn't hide all of these specificities. So for example, to boot from a volume, you need to first create a volume or clone a volume and then boot on it. So you cannot just issue Nova command. You have to first create a command with uh, um, a volume with sender and then uh, boot on it with Nova. So that's not a problem when you're using the API, but stuff like uh, Horizon, for example, Horizon, out of the box, it, it doesn't address this correctly in Grizzly, at least. I think it, uh, in Havana it's fixed. But um, basically, uh, I think the, um, the standard OpenStack in Grizzly is still uh, with local disk, so we need to address that and make that better. That's what we're trying to do with the uh, contribution. Um, like I said at the second point, uh, the functionalities of a boot from volume are not always on par with um, the locally backed VM, basically. We notice that some of the functionalities are, are simply not working with a boot from volume, so that's something we, we have to fix. For example, the rebuild and resize. Uh, again, some of this stuff may work in Havana. So the um, solution is to contribute, give back to the community, fix the, the problem we have, because um, I know for sure that it's not the, the only um, boot from volume cloud. <coughs> and I think it's a good solution. So I think we're going to see more and more of these, uh, these different clouds. A <coughs> um, lot of success we had. For example, uh, the ability to support different uh, workloads out of the box, that was good. Some of our clients were dissatisfied with their experience, the, their experience in the cloud because there, there would be um, uh, not enough IOPS to run uh, MongoDB or on, uh, other database systems. In our cloud, th this works perfectly. If, if not, they simply uh, improve the, uh, the IOPS on, on the VM. They resize the VM to a better flavor that has more IOPS, and uh, suddenly database is, uh, is working flawlessly. Um, like I said before, the VMs are highly available. So the famous uh, example of a puppy versus a cattle, in our case, it's, it's somewhere in between, I guess. You can treat them like cattle if you want, but um, uh, when you write something on a, on a volume, on solid fire, uh, even if you crash a compute node, you'll be able to, the data is never lost. Um, also, solid fire is very scalable. Um, the uh, the de duplication, <coughs> it's, it's, uh, for us, it's, it's great. Uh, we can have, for example, if you have um, VMs with 50 gigs volumes, if you run 100 of these similar volumes, the, the block level deduplication de de does a great job. So you're not using uh, much of the space. So uh, for us, it's very great. Um, also, if you the, the, the scaling of uh, SolidFire is very efficient. If you need more IOPS, you add SolidFire nodes. Every node gives you uh, 50,000 IOPS. So if, if the cloud grows, you, you grow the SolidFire backend and uh, you're able to support uh, new customers. So that's about it. Any questions? Thank you.